Hey guys, this is Tim Shepard from the Vintage Airstream Podcast. Been doing a lot of work on the trailer lately, a lot of battery and power upgrades. And of course, as you all know, I did the Go Power Solar Flex installation, 400 watts worth of panels. So I thought I'd give you a little video tour and see what I've been up to and see how it turned out. So uh, let's first, we'll go and look at the batteries that I moved underneath the street side bed. And I'll show you how I put that together, how that came out. Okay, here we go. This is the uh, 1960 Airstream Ambassador. And this is the street side bed. I have the mattress moved over to this side. So what I did is I moved both batteries uh, together under this bed. They're, they're AGM batteries, 100 amp hour Lifeline batteries. Uh, there's one, and there's the second one. They are 12 volt batteries, so they're parallel together. With a one knot cable, and I wanted to show you guys these really cool fuse holders made by uh, Blue C. They're called terminal fuses. Let's see if we can get that shot. <laughs> so what it is, you take the uh, terminal fuse holder, and you attach it right to the top bolt of the positive terminal, and then the fuse itself is this little square one inch block here. And they come in a variety of sizes. I think from, I think they go down as low as 30 amp all the way up to 300. I have 175 in here. This wire is going to the other battery over there, and it's just uh, parallel in the batteries. So I like to have a fuse in case something happens to that wire. And uh, this was the cleanest way to do it. I know you can. Everybody says you can go 18 inches away, but you know my batteries are within five cable feet of each other. And I just wanted to have a fuse uh, right on the battery. So these uh, Blue C terminal fuse holders are great. Really like it. And the nice thing too is they fit underneath the uh, battery box cover. Because that one, the second battery over here, is where all my power comes off of. Um, it has a two uh, terminal holder. And one, one terminal holder from this one ties into that battery. With another 175 amp fuse and then I have a 125 amp fuse leading from this battery over to this distribution point so that that distribution point comes into this lead here this number four wire these fuses and they tie into the three different fuse blocks that I have uh, in the trailer I have, uh, there's one fuse block here, there's one underneath the front, uh, near the front couch, and then one on the curbside bed. And then this fuse holder here takes power in from the converter, and then power in from the solar charger to um, charge the batteries. This here is a 500 amp shunt, and it is used to feed information to the trimetric battery monitor. All power goes through these grounds. This ground here comes from that battery and goes through the shunt and then all other cabling here uh, for the whole trailer goes through that shunt so that the trimetric can read everything coming in and out of the batteries. So that's pretty much it for those wiring upgrades. Didn't seem like much but it's a lot of, it was a lot of work. Okay, let's look at the, the Go Power Solar Flex panels. Got this ladder set up here so we can climb up and have a look. Let's see, so I have four panels. I have two there, and I have two in the front. And the way it works is uh, you can easily tie two panels together with a bridging connector. Uh, that comes with the expansion kits. Normally you buy one kit, it comes with a solar panel controller and a cable, and then when you want to expand beyond one panel, which is 100 watts, you get an expansion kit. The expansion kit comes with another panel and bridging clips uh, that bridge the two uh, panels electrically together. And uh, when you go beyond two panels, it gets a little more complicated. You have to um, build some kind of junction box. So that's all it is. You can see there's still quite a bit in the shade. 
I'm doing this uh, my house is blocks the morning sun. So I only have, uh, I don't know, two thirds of power available coming in. So the main lead comes in here. Let's see if I can get a shot through the refrigerator. That's what feeds the refrigerator vent. That's what feeds the uh, power of the trailer. I'm just going to hold this over, see if you can see that coming in. Um, and I just held the wire down with uh, foil tape, aluminum foil tape. And the panels are actually mounted with a 3M uh, BHB very high bond uh, tape. Um, can't remember which model it is. I'll put it in the description. Uh, I was going to also put some sealant around it some Cetaflex, uh, but I contacted 3M and they said there's no need for that. You don't need to protect their uh, tape from water or UV rays. So uh, I'm just going to go with it like this. It's got a real clean edge and I don't want to mess that up. I like it. So that's it for the install. No holes on the roof. Okay, so we'll, we'll go back inside. So just go over it again. The uh, wiring from the from the panels on the roof they come down through the refrigerator vent. Uh, there I use some Blue Sea uh, bulkhead terminals that um, allowed me to drill holes through the side of my vent and um, put in these terminals, uh, these bulkhead terminals, to allow the uh, connection point at the roof. What that did is that created a uh, junction box of sorts. Um, which allowed two panels in the back that I paralleled together with the MC4 bridging clips that come with the expansion kit from GoPower. And then the front two, uh, two with the bridging clips, those brought in two wires to the uh, terminal block. And I'll put a picture of that, a close-up picture of that so you can see it right now. And um, from there, that other side of the terminal, the bulkhead terminals, I ran a number six wire down the refrigerator vent into the trailer and uh, up to the point where it meets the charge controller. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, electrical area here. Uh, the solar panel wiring uh, comes into this uh, another Blue Sea device. I guess I like Blue Sea stuff. That's a um, 30 amp circuit breaker, but Really, in the configuration I'm using it, it's really just for a maintenance cutoff switch because as long as there's sun, there's going to be power on this wire coming in. So if I needed to pull the uh, charge controller out to um, to do any kind of work on it, I'd have to either put some kind of blankets over the panels or wait till nighttime or whatever. And with this, I can just uh, turn it off, a disconnect and be able to pull the uh, charge controller out. The reason it's not really protecting anything because you always should protect power sources at the uh, you always should put the fuse or circuit breaker at the power source so that really should be on the roof if I'm worried about protecting the panels because even though they are solar panels you do not want to short them out you can blow the internal diode inside of them if they're generating power. So you have to be very very careful about both polarity and uh, not shorting them out. So it basically, this is just a, a maintenance cutoff switch for me. So this wiring goes into the closet there where I mounted the charge controller. The reason I mounted it over here instead of in my pantry panel is because it really needs to be as close to the batteries as possible. You want to limit those cable runs. Okay, here's the, uh, the Go Power charge controller. And it has, uh, it's a 30 amp uh, PWM pulse width modulation uh, controller. And basically what that means is it charges the batteries by turning the uh, solar panel, solar power on and off very rapidly depending on how much the batteries need to be charged. It is a three or four state charger. It'll do a rapid charge, a uh, uh, standard charge and a, like a maintenance charge. It'll also do an equalize uh, lead acid batteries um, once a month. But that's not, it won't do it for, of course, AGM batteries, which don't require it. Um, it has a uh, maximum power boost mode. So at the end of the day, you can push and hold this button here, A, and it will cause this to uh, charge the batteries up 
at about 14 and a half volts for I think 30 minutes to try and get the most out of the stun. You might do it toward the end of the day, get the most power into your batteries as possible before the sun goes down. Um, so you can cycle through using B. This is volts, 13 and a half volts on the uh, batteries. Uh, the batteries are of course 100% charged, they have been for a while. And this is the number of amps coming in from the solar panels. And I got 14 and a half, 14.4 amps coming from those partially shaded panels 400 watts these panels should in full uh, sunlight uh, and of course you have to need to draw it because it's not going to uh, just shove power in here so you have to have uh, a reason to draw it so if you're drawing current like I am on purpose having all these lights on um, it could supply I think up to about 23 amps from these 400 watts each panels I think rated about 5.6 amps so um, there you go. It's it's been working great. Uh, like I said, I haven't had to have my uh, charger converter plug in at all. So we are charging almost 15 amps. We're coming in from the sun right now, and like I said, the panels are still partially shaded on the roof. So I have all the lights in the trailer turned on, and uh, like I said, they're filament bulbs, and evidently those and the Wi-Fi Ranger and the detectors and whatever other parasitic loads I have are drawing uh, 15 amps. Okay, so that's all coming from the sunlight from the 400 watts. Now let's go look at the trimetric which will tell us the net power use. Okay, so 0.4 amps is going back into the battery. So we're running all of these lights and we're charging the batteries. And like again, the uh, the charge converter, the AC converter is not not to, uh, plugged in. So this is all from solar. So there you go. That's what solar can do for you. Um, batteries are of course full. 12.9 volts. And now we're getting 0.7 amps to the charge. Probably the sun is coming up over my house and getting the panels and more sunlight. So there you go. That's the Go Power Solar Flex system with three additional panels. So that's it for my tour of my Go Power Solar Flex system. Again, I have the Solar Flex kit that includes the controller and a 100 watt panel, and then I got three additional. 100 watt expansion kits to uh, complete the system. Um, we haven't camped with it, but I'm sure it will perform well. Uh, there's no maintenance to it other than keeping the panels clean. Uh, the panels have a 10 year warranty, so I expect that this will last for uh, quite a long time. Uh, very pleased with uh, the way they look. Again, since this is an airstream that's rounded, I wouldn't want to put um, uh, the glass and aluminum flat panels on the roof. Those have to be raised up high and uh, to allow cooling underneath and um, it just wouldn't look right on an Airstream, especially a vintage Airstream. Some of the newer ones that are wide body, you might be to get away with it. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on on the roof with those. But uh, with a, uh, an older, like mine, 1960, that has much more of a uh, curve to it. These panels, they can curve up to 30 degrees uh, and they just follow the shape as you saw of that. You can't even see the panels um, you know, when you're walking around near the trailer. Uh, so it's a really, really great benefit uh, having the flexible panels for, you know, especially something you want to keep looking at as original as possible, like a lot of us like to do on our vintage Airstreams. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Um, I'm at thevap.com for the Vintage Airstream podcast and of course all of the work that I've done on the trailer here you can find at blog.thevap.com. Alright, thanks.